Excellent. Let's read chapter 60 of Cicero's Procaelio. But first of all, what happened before in chapter 59? The commentary has a really good note about it. In this chapter 59 and the next the one we're going to read, 60, Cicero returns to the grand style that he has used in chapter 34. Chapter 34 was this one with um, where he had talked about Metellus uh, in the voice of Caicus, who was talking about the grand uh, marriage and ancestors of Clodia. And he had used a lot of uh, tricolon and superlatives there. Here is return to that style that's suited for a serious topic. And the elaborate periods, there were long sentences in here, with rhetorical questions. So questions like, oh gods, why do you keep back judgment? Um, had superlatives, lots of them, let's see, there was the bitterest grief, the strongest age, uh, best condition, greatest strength, uh, he was, um, let's see, there's lots of these in here, most in undeservedly he was snatched away, and there was anaphora, so the repetition at the beginning of phrases, there was quam, quam, quam. After, like, he was in the Senate House, in the Speaker's Platform, and in the Republic, he had flourished, he'd been very much alive on well, the third day he died. Um, and Ascendaton, Ascendaton's in stuff like this, uh, this three, the tricolon bit had no connectives there, no conjunctions. So that's an example. A synotone. And they help move the audience to pity. These beautiful, elaborate ways of uh, of speaking. Cicero's grief at Metellus's death seems sincere. I would agree. But the passage is so exaggerated that we cannot be sure. I'm not quite... I, I feel like this is sort of you should make up your own opinion about this. I think that he's really, he is amplifying his grief by writing about it so uh, emphatically. Uh, but, you know, why should you doubt that Cicero was grieving at a person's death? I, I don't know. We do know that the two men were on good terms for many years. As Praetor in 63, Metellus supported Cicero's actions and helped in handling the Catalinarian crisis. In return, Cicero used his influence to make sure that Metellus would govern an important province as pro Praetor. He was awarded Sicil Pine Gaul. Um, so there was interaction between the people, and I guess it's you'll never know. You'll never quite know whether they really were great friends or just acquaintances and his exaggerating his grief. For our purposes, it seems like the grief is sincere. Now he continues to talk about that death of Keller, Metellus. Quem quidem vir si nulla vis repentini gelris uh, so that is quem virum going together, connecting relative, but like it's agreeing, so it means this man in the accusative case. Si nulla vis, if no violence, repentini scelleris, of a sudden crime, sustulisset, that comes from tolo tolere, that can mean raise, can also mean take away, snatch away. Uh, if no violence of a sudden crime snatched away this man, indeed, quona modo ille furenti fratri suo, consularis restitisset, qui consul incipientem furere, atque tonantem sua se manu, interfecturum audientes, Senatu dixerit. That is, Kona uh, Moro, how much would, like, if he hadn't died, how much would that guy have resisted, given resistance to, dative case, his mad cousin? Literally, frater can mean brother, can also mean cousin. 
uh, it's referring to Clodius, his mad cousin, Clodius. Uh, how much would he have resisted his mad cousin Clodius while he was a consularis, a an ex-consul, a person of consular rank who's no longer a consul? Uh, how much would he have resisted him as an ex-consul who, while he was a consul, uh, now this is describing Clodius, who had said that he was going to kill the guy, Clodius, while he was beginning to rage. So Clodius, while, while Clodius was beginning to rage, and to thunder, he said, while well, he, he as in Keller, Metellus Keller, the consul, uh, as a consul had said that he was going to kill Clodius beginning to rage and thunder with his own hand, sua manu, al dientes senatu is ablative absolute, with the senate listening on, while the senate was hearing it. So how much would he have resisted his mad cousin if he, uh, like he who had said he was going to kill him when he was a consul? Exarchitor domo progressa ista mulier de veneni celeritate dicere al David. That is out of this, uh, out of this house having gone out. Having gone out of this house, that's the house which um, she had shared once with Metellus and no longer does. Uh, this is feminine agreeing with the woman Clodia. So, therefore, and so, having gone out of this house, does, uh, will that woman, will that woman dare to talk? about the swiftness of poison. How can she dare to talk about the the fear of poison and like its swiftness and its horribleness? Um, the implication is that she poisoned someone. How will she dare to talk about poisoning? Nonne, surely, ipsum domum metuit, ne quam locem eikiat. That is, surely she will fear, this is future indicative, she will fear that house, nay, lest, quam wokan, quam after nay means any, uh, lest any voice would come out of it. So she, surely she should fear that the house itself is going to speak. Surely she would fear uh, would she not fear that the parietes conscius, the um, the knowing walls, conscius is like gives us the word conscious, and um, like the walls are the things that have witnessed her crime. Basically, surely she would fear the the knowing, the all too knowing walls. Surely she would fear that uh, that funestum, that deadly. Uh, and a grief bringing night. Uh, surely she would tremble, perorescet. Uh, she would shudder, and the pair just strengthens horescet. Uh, surely she should shudder at that uh, deadly, death bringing and grievous night. So that's a rhetorical question. Said very well for. But I return on and to the crime, et enim haec fac dilius clarissimi ac fortissimi viri mentio, et vocem meam fletu debilil tavit, et mentem dolore impedivi. And indeed, uh, these, uh, the, the, Actually, hike is feminine singular. Mentio is feminine singular third declension noun. This mention, facta, having been made, or you could say the mention that I have made of 
that most famous and bravest man. The mention I've made of that very famous and brave man has both, et, et, becomes both, has both weakened my voice with weeping and has clouded, literally impeded my mind with grief. You can imagine Cicero saying this, uh, this skillful and malicious digression about the death of Keller, um, and really acting it out, really bringing, uh, like, having a pause here of, oh yeah, it, I can't go on, I've got to stop this here, I can't talk about his death any longer. In chapter 61, which we're going to skip as well, uh, 61 goes back to within. Just as just before this uh, digression, we had the last word literally was whenenu, poison. He's like, okay, but you know, poison, where it came from, poison. Let's get back to that topic. That's the skill of Cicero. He he ends on a note of poison, talks about this uh, malicious rumor about Claudia poisoning her husband returns to poison and uh, as almost as if nothing had happened but the jurors know everyone knows uh his made a really uh emphatic attack on Claudia's character 